Number 10, Eminem on 8 Mile. You probably know of Eminem more from his rapping career more than his role as Jimmy B. Rabbit Smith in the movie 8 Mile. You may also be wondering why would we put him on our list? Because most people are well aware of his drug use. Well, the answer is simple. It all started on the set of this film. During filming, Eminem would work an average of 16 hours a day and would have trouble sleeping by the time he got home. How did he remedy this issue? He was given Ambien on set, which he took. The pill worked very well for him, so he got a prescription. Then he started to take other prescription pills, such as Vicodin, Valium, and then quickly became addicted. The pills would help him sleep, but started to wear off after a few hours. Five years after the movie's release in 2002, Eminem overdosed on methadone and was rushed to the hospital. After attending rehab and starting a new exercise routine, Star has been sober since 2008. Elton John actually helped Eminem through his rehabilitation process, calling him weekly to make sure he's alright. Number 9. Carrie Fisher Carrie Fisher is another celebrity whose drug use is no secret to those who follow Hollywood's news. It's been satirized in her novel and its movie adaptation, both called Postcards from the Edge. Fisher's cocaine use started on the set of one of her movies, The Empire Strikes Back with her portraying Princess Leia. After the release of the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope, Fisher had a difficult time finding roles in other movies, and she turned to cocaine to help her cope with the problems she faced. The actress has reported that she didn't actually like the drug very much, but nevertheless would take whatever she could to get high. She had admitted to being high during nearly all of her scenes that took place on Planet Hawk. Similarly to Eminem, Fisher also abused prescription drugs, and she later overdosed by accidentally combining them with sleeping pills in 1985 after a few months of sobriety. Conveniently, this overdose provided an interesting plot twist for the novel that she wrote in 1987. Number 8. Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter That's right folks, child star Daniel Radcliffe struggled with alcoholism while he was fighting off Death Eaters as one of our favorite wizards, Harry Potter. While he never actually drank anything on set, except for the Three Broomsticks famous butterbeer, of course, the young actor has told reporters that he would often show up to work still drunk from a party the night before. He turned to alcohol to cope with the difficulty of adjusting to a life of fame, as well as his fear that he would not be able to continue acting in the future. After his role as the Chosen One came to an end, it turns out that You Know Who wasn't the only reason that Harry always seemed to be going through a rough time, and the actor has had some very real problems of his own to deal with as well. According to Radcliffe, there are several scenes in the movie where he is obviously intoxicated and not all there. In 2010, Radcliffe found a way to control his drinking on his own, and has thankfully not had any problems with alcohol since. Number 7. Edward Norton and Brad Pitt, Fight Club Do you ever get together with your friends and just decide to hit golf balls in an attempt to hit a man across the street? Well, that's what Brad Pitt and Edward Norton decide to do one drunken night while on the set for their movie Fight Club. After apparently having too many drinks, the duo found themselves with a set of golf clubs, some golf balls, a catering van, and some time to kill. David Fincher, the director, saw the two actors and decided to film them and add the scene to the final cut in the movie. I wonder who had to pay to repair the damages. Did it come out of the film's budget? Anyways, this was not the only time Fincher decided to change or add things in the spur of the moment. Remember the scene where the narrator punches Tyler Durden in the ear? Right before filming that scene, Fincher took Norton aside and told him to carry the punch through and actually hit Pitt. So in that scene, Pitt's expression is showing real pain, and Norton's is showing real amusement. Number 6. Shia LaBeouf, Lawless While filming Lawless, Shia LaBeouf would drink moonshine to get into the spirit of his character, no pun intended, Jack Bonduran. His character in the movie was a bootlegger who sold and drank moonshine during the Prohibition period in America. The actor compared the feeling he got from drinking moonshine to heroin, saying it gave him a similar feeling to the drug when he drank it. He described it as a rough sort of high. LaBeouf's behavior during filming was apparently so bad while he was drunk that his co-star Mia Weskoska actually tried quitting. This is not the only time LaBeouf has done strange things in the name of getting into character. He has also reportedly cut his face open on the set of Fury to make his character's wounds seem more realistic, and he dropped acid multiple times off screen to prepare for his role in the necessary death of Charlie Countryman. There's no question that LaBeouf is dedicated to his craft. He certainly brings the concepts of method acting and getting into character to a whole new level. 
Number 5. Anna Kendrick, Drinking Buddies You might suspect from a title like Drinking Buddies that some of the actors in this movie might not have been 100% sober all of the time. I mean, what difference would a little bit of alcohol make when you're pretending to be drunk anyway? During filming, the actors drank fake beer as well as real beer, although it must have slipped everyone's mind to give actress Anna Kendrick a heads up about this minor detail. She started filming a bar scene with the alcohol-free drinks, but wasn't told when they switched to the real thing. About halfway through the take, Kendrick was completely drunk from playing a drinking game with her co-stars, and not realizing that the beer she was drinking wasn't alcohol-free. At least she didn't need to worry about remembering many lines while intoxicated, as that particular movie relied heavily on improv. Despite how well the scene ended up going, the actress has reported that she was less than comfortable with her improvised drunkenness. Maybe next time she'll be sure to confirm that her drink is non-alcoholic before she downs it on set. Number 4. Ethan Embry, Can't Hardly Wait Do you remember Can't Hardly Wait, that comedy from the 90s about teenage drama and graduation that starred Ethan Embry? Well, if you can, then you're a step ahead of him, because the actor has stated in interviews that he actually can't recall a single thing from the movie. Except for two things, the fact that there was a party and a single conversation he had with the director. In the 90s, Embry smoked a lot of cigarettes and marijuana, and was extremely high throughout the entire filming process for the movie. He's even described himself as smelling like a walking ashtray because of how much he smoked during that time. We can all assume that this is a pretty accurate description of how he smelled by the reaction of his co-star, Jennifer Love Hewitt, who reportedly gave him a box of breath mints before they shot the kissing scene. Way to be subtle about your thoughts on Ethan's scent, Jennifer. But I'm sure Ethan didn't mind. And if he did, he probably doesn't remember it. Number 3. Wesley Snipes, Blade Trinity Wesley Snipes is an actor best known for his deep voice and his role in the Blade movies as the title character. His behavior on the set of the first two movies wasn't too bad compared to the third, during which the cast and crew started having some pretty severe problems with him. The actor would smoke marijuana in his trailer during filming and his behavior slowly became worse and worse as filming progressed. He reportedly hated working with Ryan Reynolds and when he was high he would actually chase his director, David Goyer, all over the set. His stunt double filmed most of the scenes for this movie because he would refuse to leave his trailer unless he needed to do a close up shot, which would be the only time he took a break from getting high. His behavior continued to get worse until he began to actually refuse to communicate with the crew face to face, and would instead use post-it notes to leave messages for Goyer. Based on what we've heard from how this actor behaves behind the scenes, I think it's safe to say the cast and crew were relieved when the director finally called it a wrap. Number 2. Dan Aykroyd, The Blues Brothers This one may come as a bit of a shock considering that Canadian comedian Dan Aykroyd was involved in many family-friendly franchises such as Ghostbusters and has even made appearances on Saturday Night Live. But nonetheless, the actor did in fact partake in drugs while on the set of the 80s comedy, The Blues Brothers. While everyone knew about his co-star John Belushi's drug problem, most people assumed that Aykroyd was clean. This assumption is in fact wrong, and the actor has openly admitted to doing cocaine on set. Most of the cast and crew did the drug to help him stay awake during the many late night shoots. And there was even a portion of the film's budget set aside specifically to supply cocaine to the workers on set. In respect to his drug use, Aykroyd has said that he only participated to get through the many late nights, and luckily he never became addicted to the stuff. On the other hand, Belushi, his on-screen brother, quickly became hooked on drugs, and unfortunately died in 1982 from an overdose on cocaine and heroin, two years after the hit comedy was released. Number 1. Kevin Nealon and Justin Kirk, Weeds And here to steal the gold, or, well, green in this case, are Kevin Nealon and Justin Kirk from the TV show Weeds. Similarly to Drinking Buddies, how surprised can we really be that actors got intoxicated on the set of a show about a drug dealing mom? Someone had to sneak a little something from the stash every now and then, right? Well, what sets this duo apart from Anna Kendrick and her castmates? is that they actually didn't use real marijuana on the set while portraying their pot smoking characters. They were instead given a mix of herbs to smoke during their scenes. Roberto Benabib, the executive producer of the show, has reported that it made the two actors feel lightheaded and the actors themselves have said that the herbs they smoked on set would actually give them a better high than regular marijuana would. They make a number one on our list because they're the only ones that have gotten high off of fake substance rather than accidentally drinking beer or doing real drugs. 